It's the same stupid stuff every week. But that's not even the story right now. The story is the quarterback looks awful. Aaron Rodgers looks old. Aaron Rodgers looks frustrated. I, 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 listen, I'm not in the film room. I'm not smart enough to know these attempted back shoulder throws. Mike Williams, Gilmore on the pick. Whose fault really is it? I don't know. But I know that he had Garrett Wilson open by 15 yards. That would have been a walk-in touchdown. Hit him. Like the Jets are are a massive problem. You know, the now the Bills are coming back to the pack a little bit, but that's not even the point. Like, there's right now, outside of the defense keeping them around, Sal, what do you look at with the Jets and say, this is a strong suit? It's not the quarterback. It's not the pass protection because he's getting popped 12 times a week. It's not the running game. What is it? Well, that's why I think it's important that you touch on the quarterback because you're right. Everybody at this point would say the same thing about Robert Sala. Like, we all know he ain't it. We've known this for a very long time. If the Jets were going to do anything this year, it was going to be in spite of the head coach. But the one hope that you had, even with that overrated defense, and it'd be nice if Sauce Gardner could actually catch an interception, like that yeah. ruined the whole game. Yeah. My daughter could have caught zone. that ball. I mean, he's on his knees. The ball hits him in the chair. Anyway, it's about the quarterback because the one reason why we thought this might be different and not the same old Jets is because of Aaron Rodgers. Now, you had to hope and believe that it was going to be better than anything that we've seen before, and you figured it would based on the Jets' ineptitude at the quarterback position. However, you also knew that Rodgers was 41 years of age, coming off a season-ending injury and also the last time we saw him with Green Bay he wasn't peak vintage Aaron Rodgers so you're right like do I know what he was trying to do what Garrett Wilson route the, the, ran the wrong route whatever mm -hmm. here's what I know he threw three interceptions yesterday Rodgers in his career doesn't throw picks outside of his last year in Green Bay he didn't throw a double digit interceptions for a decade yeah. and he's yeah. already now he threw three in a game yesterday he's already at what four on the year point is that doesn't happen he may have played the worst game that I've ever seen him play the interception that was Return for a touchdown oh by Vegas. Oh my God, Almighty! That, I don't, I don't what? know. I don't know how you didn't that, see that. That's a Daniel Jones throw. That's not an and all the respect. Not this we'll Daniel to, Jones. Yeah, that is true. We'll get to Giants. the Giants coming up in a little we'll get bit. To him. We'll but get that, to him. that's a that's a rookie quarterback mistake. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, to say, remember, and I know you do. Remember when when Piper just obliterated Snook his head with the coconut, and after mm. that he called himself Piper would walk around and he'd call himself the Legend Killer. Yeah. The Jets are the Legend Killers. They killed Brett Favre. They are now yeah. in the process of killing Aaron Rodgers. It's insane. That was a Quite frankly, the Jets really haven't played well at all this year. It's not like there was an aberration. You look at the San Francisco game, horrendous. You look at the Tennessee Titans game, if Will Levis was more buttoned up, they lose that game, they're 0-2. All right, the Patriots, they were definitely crisp, but the Patriots aren't good. Outside of Carolina, worst team in football. The Denver game, awful. Yesterday, awful. They're never ready to start games. And think about this, guys. Now, I know, I know it's not that easy, but it shouldn't be this hard. Hard and the Jets in the last two games in the rain that started raining in London, it rained all day last all, all day in the, in the Denver game. Have thrown the ball a hundred times, 100 attempts in the rain with Rodgers. I mean, that's just that's I, that's criminal. It's because they can't run the football and they think they can and they talk tough and look at the two backs. They can't run the football. It's no. an embarrassment. You can't Why? stop the run and you can't run the football. Those are big problems. And I'll give the defense a little bit of a pass because that wasn't the main issue yesterday. It's been inconsistent throughout the course of the year and I do want more from Sauce Gardner and just in general, but that wasn't the issue yesterday. The fact that they can't run the football is what you, you can't even you can't function if you can't run the football at least a little bit. They cannot run the football at all. And it's the same nonsense. It's like, all right, let's do a little dive here. Let's do a little trap here. Yeah. A little off tackle. Yeah, all right, well, get a yard and a half, basically. So it's now second and eight. Let's try it again. Predictably, get a yard or get nothing. Third and seven. All right, let's try to find Garrett Wilson. Let's force feed him 15 times. Yeah, it's it, it really 22 is. 22 times, I believe, I saw that they that they tempted Was that the throw. target? I was just throwing Number, yeah. but it was, I knew it was really high. I think it was Connor stunning. Hughes tweeted it after like 22 times. It's like force being Garrett Wilson. Sal, the, the tight ends don't block. I mean, there, there is so much fundamentally wrong with this team. We shouldn't be stunned, but I thought their talent was better. I thought Rodgers was better. I thought Hackett and Rodgers together would be better. And right now, they're a complete joke. They're, they're a losing football team. You got to play the Steelers eventually in two weeks. So I'm not saying they're, they're amazing, but yeah. I mean, right now, the Jets are lucky. They beat. They could beat anybody. Well, so it's it's just spiraling out of control, and we shouldn't be surprised. But I am surprised that the offense looks this this bad. Here's the issue: if Rodgers is close to this, 
Remember, the last time we saw Aaron Rodgers healthy with the Green Bay Packers, he did not have a great season. No, he didn't. Now, he didn't. Now, would, have, would, have, didn't. Would, would it be better than anything we've seen from a Jets quarterback? Yeah, you'd take that. 26 touchdowns and 12 behind, whatever it was. You'd take that from a Jets quarterback, but that's not – why you go get Aaron Rodgers. You were getting him because you thought that last year was an aberration. And you look at what the Packers did, smartly transitioned not only from Favre to Rodgers, but from Rodgers to Jordan Love. And the Jets both times, because they haven't built a foundation properly, get sucked in to go and to chase that old quarterback. You reference it, what Favre didn't work. And now with Rodgers, you know, he gets hurt all last year. This year he looks like, you know, an average quarterback. He doesn't look like Aaron Rodgers. If he is that the Jets are toast. Oh, That's yeah. It. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to throw three interceptions every week, but if Rodgers plays anything close to what you saw yesterday, missing throws, making bad decisions, they have no chance. I mean, the one thing you could bet on with Rodgers, he doesn't throw interceptions. It is amazing to me how the Jets, with like every other NFL team out there, with days to prepare and script some plays and look at the opposing defenses and figure out what, at least at the start of the game, might help them advance the football. They come out, it's three and out. They're one of two teams without a without a score on their opening possession. Uh, you know, you're watching the game. It's like midway through the second quarter yesterday. Jets have two first downs. It, it's just, it really is, it's, an, it's embarrassing. And it shouldn't be stunning, even though, again, like the depths of their struggles are, are surprising to me. But... Now you take a Hail Mary, you probably get fleeced at a trade for Devontae Adams because you have to. Uh, and, you know, the chances that this thing works out, and I don't want to be overly negative because I'm usually, you know, probably tilting a bit more positively than I should with this loser, sad, sack franchise. <laughs> but there's nothing that I see right now that gives me an ounce of hope. I'm sitting there, I'm bored to tears. Even Rich Eisen, who stinks at play. The other thing about these London games, I can't stand, and I like Rich. I think Rich yeah. is a great dude. Yeah. I think he's good on the pods. I yep. think he's good. Yep. I think he's phenomenal. I think he's witty. I even liked him on SportsCenter. He's a talented guy. He stinks at play-by-play. So yesterday I was annoyed at everything, and the Jets are two and three. Just absorb that. Five games, losing record, and this was supposed to be the easy part of the schedule. And, and at worst, they should be three and two because there's no way you could justify losing to Denver. I don't care that Denver won again yesterday. You yeah, look at that schedule coming. But, but There's a team that people talk about a Super Bowl you know, winning the division, 12-win team. Well, math is going to say there's no way they're getting to 12 wins. They'd be lucky if they get to 10 at this particular point. And even forget the math. Just watch them play. Now, we'll get to the Giants coming up in a little bit. Obviously, we got a lot of playoff baseball to get to with both the Yankees and the Mets, so we will do just that. But right now, we're starting with your jet calls. Our friends at Town Fair Tire remind you that at Town Fair Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires. From Connecticut to Maine, nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Phil is in River Edge. What's up, Phil? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Phil. Hey, so uh, I know that the, the offense starts out way too slowly. The countless, countless three and outs, they end up getting behind the eight ball early in the game. That leads to them not being able to diversify their game plan. The fact they aren't able to run the ball, putting up 36 yards on the ground. Like I said this before, but Keith Carter is a huge issue on this team as the O-line running game coordinator. <laughs> but I hate hearing Douglas being tied to Sala as being on the hot seat. He's hit on every first-round pick except for Zach Wilson, every second-round pick. He deserves the, like, the chance to what, be you able know, Beckton? to... Oh, I mean, back then, too, but he's actually playing pretty good for Philadelphia. Yeah, who cares? You know, what do you think about that? He, the Jets drafted him. He's playing good for Philadelphia. I mean, my God. Come on, Phil. <laughs> but hold on. What about what about McDonald? What about Vera Tucker, like Gardner? What I'm saying is that Douglas deserves the chance to hire a new coach and try and draft another quarterback. I just feel like he's earned that, personally. Uh, listen, first of all, and thanks for the call there, Phil. It's early. I don't even want to have that conversation today because there's too much football to go through. But I would say this, okay? When I, if I were to weigh the merits of, of Douglas versus Sala, now some might disagree, but myself, if I was another NFL team, let's say they both get fired this year, if that happens, right? Yeah. And if they don't make the playoffs, they will. Like, to me... I'm not saying Joe would be the first one that I'd hire, but I would at least interview Joe because Joe's made some good trades. He's drafted some some good players. Robert Sala is he is awful. I can't watch him anymore. Like he just there's zero intensity. All he he just he is just, he is useless, man. Robert Sala 
is awful. Yeah. Well, what else do you say? You know, how many more nothing. times do we have to say I, I this? Mean, I, I don't know how many years we're going to say the same thing. Actually, we don't have to talk about it at the end of this year because he's going to get fired eventually, which he should have been fired a year ago, and you could argue he should have never been hired in the first place. But it, to me, Joe Douglas also has to build a team that can win. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, he hit on all these picks. Uh, says who? Is Garrett Wilson what we thought Garrett Wilson was going to be? Not really. It, it's Not Brees quite. Hall. Like, what, what does Brees Hall accomplish at the NFL level? He's hurt a lot. He's what, a home run guy. What about Sauce Gardner? I mean, a shutdown corner to me, BT, is a guy who sits on one top receiver, yeah. shuts him down. Not travels the field. I know. Or whatever. Or it doesn't does, travel the field. Me, yeah, I does, wish he did. Right. Doesn't travel the field. You should yeah. be you should be following around the best receiver. Yeah. He doesn't do that. How do you drop that interception yesterday? And by the way, it's not the first one he dropped. I was at Dallas. Remember week two? Yeah. Jets beat the Bills. They go to Dallas week two last yes. year. He had a play, and I was there for this. He had a play on the sideline where that is, you know, Dak just telegraphed that he jumped. Jumps the route. It's a pick six. No one just drops the ball. So, like, you know, they're not losing because of, of Sauce Gardner. But I do think, I think your ultimate point, and you've kind of said picked, this before. He, that he's overrated. Well, not maybe not overrated, but we kind of overstate what these young core players' accomplishments are. They've accomplished nothing together. Zero. Right. Like, they have some skill, clearly. Definitely. And they have a lot more skill than... Pretty much most, not Sauce, because we obviously saw Revis here with the Jets, but offensively, like, you see Brees Hall, it's like, holy crap. Yeah. We have a young running back with potential. You see Garrett Wilson, holy crap, we have a young receiver with potential. They haven't done anything here. They just haven't. And if anything, they've under-delivered the high, lofty expectations. And Sauce, and it's not to pick on him, but if he makes that interception yesterday, that is a layup interception, yep. it changed the whole dynamic of the game. And he's been, now listen, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and complain when the flags don't get thrown, but he's been very handsy yes. for a long time. Time. Yep. And it seems like they're starting to reverse that trend and not not looking the other way when he does that anymore. Great point. Charlie's in Beth Page. What's up, Charlie? Hey, Charles. Hi, uh, fellas. How you doing? I mean, I, it's very sad when he played an early Sunday morning game because my day was ruined by a quarter to one <laughs> yesterday. I really, it really set the tone for the day. And the Mets ended it the way they did. So it was not a great Sunday. But, you know, is Zach Wilson back? Two interceptions in the first quarter. Pick six the other way. I mean, we've got this guy in here. We thought he was going to take us to a promised land. And then the biggest thing, he misses Wilson. Wilson had to receive a quarterback beat down the sideline at the end of the game. Yep. I mean, he's got to hit him on that. That's what he's on by 10 yards, guy. 12 yards, 15 yards. Yeah, I and mean, you're not even close. I know. And you, generally, terrible. generally, Charlie, and thank you for the call. We appreciate you checking in. As always, appreciate that passion. Generally, even early in the game, and I forget the exact play, but when you see Rodgers drop back to pass and he throws the football, he knows where it's going. And if there, there are times where you know when he gets rid of it that it's going to be a completion. And to see him yesterday early in the game miss, I forget who the hell it was, but down the right sideline, miss, yeah. miss a throw. Or I'm like, what the hell was that like? Yeah, I know. Usually don't see him miss by that much. Now a drop, a good defensive play, sure. Yeah, well, but Lazard's was, horrendous. Oh, he, my I can't, God. I can't with this guy anymore. He, he's another he's one. He's awful. You hit him in the chest, he can't. I mean, he's got hands like Sauce Gardner. I mean, Sal, did you see what <laughs> difference is his receiver? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see when Rodgers was doing this with his hand? Like, he was – you think that, that – that's got to be the hack it, right? Well, like, hurry I'm up. I'm trying to describe it. Yeah, Circle, like, yeah like, it was like a good go, 10 seconds. It, yeah. Let's go get the play. Like, what? You could already tell that the, the level of frustration. Now, he owned this poor play yesterday. The thumb went to his chest, and he had to because he played that bad. But there, any continuity we thought he had with Hackett, I, I, I see absolutely zero relationship there. Like, and, and here's the other thing. Like, if you want to make a change, and you might have to at some point, they're not going to fire Salah midseason, I don't think. You very well might have to fire Hackett. And I got news for Rodgers. If Aaron Rodgers doesn't like it, tough. You can leave, too. Like, who is Aaron? I, I, and I'm a Rodgers fan. Yeah, I know. Who is Rodgers to dictate these rules? Hackett's offense, dude, it looks like it's 1991. It's awful. But this is the problem, BT. And this is not a problem that just happened in London. It's not a problem that happened over the course of the first five weeks. This is a problem that happened years in the making. The Jets as a franchise put themselves in a position where they had to beg and plead to be able to get the 40-year-old quarterback. Then they need to be able to get him, so they hire Nathaniel Hackett as the offensive coordinator. Then he gets hurt for the whole year. Last year blows up in their face because the plan was all about Rodgers, not the foundation that they built. It was all about Rodgers. Then they double down. 
and said, you know what, we're going to try this again and go with our same head coach without a foundation, same crappy offensive coordinator, and, and our 41-year-old quarterback off of it. Like, this How is... How they not done that? They're going to triple down with Adams and give up a second-round yeah, yeah, pick right, for right. Devontae Adams. Right, why Watch. not pile on top of it? Like, <laughs> and, then, and then, like, at the end of it, be like, oh, I don't know why this didn't work out. I can't imagine it. Build it the Man. right way. They are such a freaking mess. It's disgusting. <laughs> Charlie is in total. What's up, Charlie? Hey, guys. Morning. Hey. Uh, very sad. A couple of things. Just want to hear your thoughts. I want to try to get them all out. Uh, we're a mess with the Jets on a lot of fronts. I watched Aaron Rodgers during training camp. I don't think he's fully healed from that Achilles. And I watch him during the game. She still has a limp, number one. Number hey, two, he's got a limp because his knees almost front. exploded twice because yeah. they can't protect him. Yeah, and, yeah. and his legs aren't the problem. It's his arm. That's the issue. Well, I think there's a lot of issues. I mean, we've got two good running backs, plate blowing, Hackett, Sala. And like you said, guys are saying, the list goes on and on and on. And as much as I love Devontae Adams, what are we going to get another great receiver who's now good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, again, and, and not only I that, don't it's, get not, it. it's not going to fix their problems, Charlie. And thank you for the call. You know, speaking of play calling, and look, Rogers is banged up, and he's old. Like that, that's and what he happens. Tough. He it, does fight through this. He gets it, a. He's a warrior. He might be a finished it's warrior. Still no excuse. Yeah, right. But he's tough. I, and I love Aaron Rodgers. Me too. But that type of game, and as down as I've been on the Jets for a lot of other reasons, I never thought that we would see Rodgers. Throw three interceptions no, in a game. No way, like, ever a pick six. I was legit stunned at that. But before, uh, you know, before I move on here, the play calling he was talking about. Oh yeah, dude. Fourth down. I mean, fourth and two. Yeah, you're going for it on the play before you run it right into the line of scrimmage. Of course, you're gonna do that again if you go for it. That's the play call you're gonna draw. Well, think about this. Number one, you can argue with the concept of going for it, right. which I at that and I'm usually fairly aggressive. I would have taken the three because you got to get some points on the board. But if you're going to go for it and you got to get two yards, which is six feet, don't start seven yards behind oh my the God. line. Think about the math and think about the stupidity. You got to get two yards and you're seven yards back. Not only that, why would you run the football when they just stuffed you? Like, it's so the decision to go for it, and I have no big issue with that. I'm usually going to take it. the points. Yeah, I, that's not the biggest issue. The decision to run the ball is the biggest issue, and then the design run that they had yeah. is a major issue. I know, I know. That's generally a good spot for a quarterback rollout, but he's he's 40. BT and Sal on the fan come back. More of your calls. We're going to get to the Giants coming up in a little bit as well. And then at 11 o'clock, we'll get to the baseball. So a lot to get to today. Yanks, Mets, Jets, Giants, 888-808-1019. BT and Sal on the fan.